So I'm interested. So, so how, because it was in 2001, I think, that the, um, that Eurostat published their economy-wide uh, MFA. Mm -hmm. And this was, of course, partly done thanks to your work and the work of your team. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering what was the discussion? How did you manage to convince Eurostat to, to have a, because they already had, I guess, a state of the environment reports and environmental reporting, but having a systemic accounting, how, how, what were the, the discussions back in the day about this? It was very similar, like in Austria. I mean, they were also suffering from these thousands of effluents and emissions and, and wastes, yeah? And they could not come to grips with it. It was a miserable statistics. Every country did it differently. Uh, the distinctions were not clear. The, the, the amounts, the measure, the, even the measurement units were not clear. It was terrible, yeah? So they were very happy to, to see a sort of light at the horizon that maybe there could be a quantification that is more consistent and logical and can build on economic statistics and on, on what's there, yeah? And not invent a completely new system of, of recordings. So it was and quite was easy then. For the economists, they yeah. understood that this was something that I mean, they, of course, only wanted it in money and not in tons, yeah, or in jewel, yeah, never mind. But it was, it was uh, something that communicated well between the di disciplines and with the, and with the officers who had to deal with the, with the st existing statistics and suffered from them, yeah. So you, you kind of went to them or your team or your colleagues proposed that to them and they, because did it take a lot of time to put this into practice and kind of curious how, you know, a, a scientific discipline can uh, really yeah. get in in policy and really influence it. And, uh, it was, it's, it's a lot by chance. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the World Resources Institute picked up the idea, did that big report. The Austrian uh, Minister of Environment was very proud of this new report or this new approach. And they went to the AU and told them what interesting things they had. Uh, the Austrian Environmental Agency was not so happy because it liked its thousands of indicators, but, but still they saw that they could find a, a way of aggregating their stuff in a, in a reasonable form. So it, it was not against much resistance. It was, some didn't understand it or, or yeah, but it, it went smoothly as far yeah. as I remember. I mean, it took about, I mean, we did these big international conferences with the Wuppertal Institute and Leiden and, and Statistics Sweden. And then the Japanese came in who had this very early program on reduce, reuse, recycle. So, this was already a pretty strong international bundle of both scientists and also some policymakers. Yeah, it went smoothly. I so mean, that that was the Con Accounts uh, conferences in the nineties. Con Accounts conferences, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And then the Japanese invited me, and yeah. So this spread from there. It spread. Yeah. The only who, the only country who did not jump on that train was interestingly U.S. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. The U.S. is the only country, and also although the World Resources Institute strongly supported this, and also other institutions in the U.S. on the on the on the science reporting level, but in policy. Okay. I think the U.S. thinks in money and nothing. <laughs> no other unit has a chance. <laughs> yeah, although their input-output analysis tables are major compared to some European countries, so I yeah. think they're they're very good in accounting. But uh, yeah, perhaps... but they are in money. Yeah. it's all in money. Yeah, and now also the the multi-regional input-output tables that are in mass or mm -hmm. in energy units. Yeah, the Americans don't really. <laughs> participate in this they don't understand yeah the, the value it, of it but it's like with the with the quality of life i mean in the my, my first oecd experience <laughs>